This episode is brought to you by the Shop 1 in 5 Pledge and Small Business Shopping Directory. It's a commitment to make one in five of your purchases from a small business online or offline. So head to shop1in5.com to take the pledge. And friend, while you are there, check out and shop from hundreds of small businesses in the Small Business Shopping Directory. It's the go-to directory to discover, support, and shop small businesses all in one place. Head to shop1in5.com. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey, everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlo-Sita, an Amazon guru that has built a multi-six-figure product-based business. And introducing the other half of the Product Boss, Jacqueline Snyder. She has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, Product Bosses. Did you know that every Wednesday, we have a live talk show called Bosses and Breakfast, where we chat business, mindset, mom life, and everything in between. It's a really fun time, and it feels like a conversation amongst friends. In fact, sometimes we have conversations that we don't necessarily know that they're going to lead to where they lead, but we get such an amazing reaction from our listeners and from our community and from our students that we actually wanted to bring it to you to hear today. Yes, our favorite thing about Bosses and Breakfast is that we get to get together, we get to laugh, we get to be inspired about what's happening, and we get to check in with you and re-motivate you on why you're working so hard. So join us next time. We'd love to see you there. And here's that snippet from one of our shows that got tons of positive response, where we all walked away feeling more inspired and motivated for the week. So let's jump in. Who here doesn't like to sell? Do you feel salesy or that you don't like to be the salesperson of your product? Let us know. Yeah. So there's not like a magic thing that happens that you mindset is a thing. It's a process, just like any sort of like, I'm a big believer in therapy. Therapy is not a cure. It is a process. You know, you don't, you go through it, you go through the mindset things, you go through a whole bunch of stuff and you just always have to do it. It's not like a light switch, you know? though there are like light switch moments, you still have to keep at it because you end up reverting back to some of those mindsets when you're in a uh, fight or flight, right? So like if you're feeling really chaotic and you're like the sky is falling, you revert back to those instinctive thoughts a lot of times. So if you are in a situation where you're very uncomfortable, like trying to sell something, you get all these thoughts in your head because you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I feel you kind of get that surge of fight or flight in your body. And so this is an ongoing process, but you have to know that the goal is to sell and that selling is not a bad thing. You know, I think that's the switch that needs to happen in your head is that there probably is something where you put the two together of selling is bad. And selling is not bad. Or someone said that it's a necessary evil, right? To even associate Mm -hmm. the word evil and sales together is already putting this like mindset block in your brain of like, it's not good to sell. So I think it's important to go back and think through like, why? Like what negative associations do you all have that selling is negative? Selling is bad. Selling feels salesy. Are you in business or are you in a hobby that you like to gift the things that you make? That's mm-hmm. my question. Because the thing is, is like if you've created your business and the products that you've created, you've done it because you feel like there is a need in the market that other people want what you sell, right? Mm-hmm. Do they want like Dawn making, you know, yarn and stuff, right? Like she does hand dyed yarn. So when she does that, it's like because People want to be seen in that knitting community, for example, and they like that they like her sense of humor and they like that she's seeing them, that she's like, oh, I see you out there and I have stuff for you. They resonate with her. Mm -hmm. So you're actually serving your customers by presenting to them, here's what I have and these are all the benefits around it for you, customer. And if you want it, this is the way to get it. So if you can kind of take it out of your brain of being like, you know, um, someone said the MLMs make you feel like, like, listen, MLMs 
There's a they whole teach other- in a different way. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. People make a lot of money in that way. Mm-hmm. And like that structure is its own structure. And we're not, you're not an MLM. You're a small business owner that has products to sell. Yeah, for sure. And I think that a lot of times we think that people think that way, but they don't. We think that way about ourselves. So you have to find somebody that you see doing similar things. Look around. Everybody's selling tons of stuff. All these people in the product biz community are selling their tails off and people love it. They love it. They want the things they're selling. They love it. You're not in your mind thinking, Dawn, are you thinking, I can't believe she's selling her goods. I can't believe she's showing up in our Facebook group. How dare she tell how, me all yeah. about her products? Yeah. How dare she allow me to be here in this Facebook group and try to sell me something I that mean, if she feels that her way. own that she made with her own hands, you know? <laughs> So most people don't think that way. We just think that they think that way. And so you found, you need to find somebody that you can be like, oh, you know, this person does it really well. I like the way that she sells. And then you do the same things. Like you do similar things. Like you show up how that person does. You show up because then it kind of like, we are our own worst critic. There's so many times where like, even when I was starting to do video, I would be like, I need to take that down. You know, like I would do it. I would get that surge of, you know, courage. I'd post it. And then I'd be like, oh my gosh, the things that people must be thinking. L- listen to my voice. I say like, like so many times, you know, my voice, especially my cackle, my laugh, all those things. Did you things. say like before you met me? <laughs> yes, of course. Okay, okay the good. Whole so you're a Valley Girl from like, Iowa. Okay, good. Yeah. And the thing is, nobody else thought that. You know, it was even just if they me. did. Yeah. If, even if they did, I'm not for them. You know, not everybody is for you. That's just a hundred percent the truth. The people that really get annoyed of you will leave. Thank goodness, because you don't, you know, whatever they can find their people. And then the people that like you will stay for who you are. And that's really what you want. So. I think it's just one of those things where, you know, you might feel that way going in there and selling, but people don't feel that way at all. And if they do, they can leave because how dare they be in your Facebook group for free and feel like they should never be sold to. I mean, there takes time and energy to go into that Facebook group, right? Yeah. And I think that's, you know, so going back, Dawn had said, and I think we kind of helped her get to an aha moment. And I think this is really big because we worked with Dawn for a very long time and we never really got to this. But she said, my dad sold Amway when I was a kid and he was always bugging friends and family that didn't want it. So she probably felt shame and embarrassment of like, oh, like dad's Mm -hmm. trying to do it again and they just don't want to be bothered. And so maybe that's something that's resonating with her. I'll tell you that we all have parental issues. And I remember when I first started my business, I was like, am I like, this is like really intimate, but like, am I like stealing from people, like offering my services for this amount of money is how I used to feel. Like, is am I worth it? Like, should I be charging less? Mm. Like, is this too much that I'm charging them? Like, am I hosing them? Like, this is all, these are all the thoughts in my, in my head. I mean, at some point after all those thoughts kind of went away, people were paying me $10,000 a month to work for them. So like, this is, this is like a, it was a mindset shift because I was like, no, what I do, it has value to it and they need it. And it's helped people build businesses and start their, you know, dreams. So I think there's a mindset thing. And then I always want you guys to think back to and say, where does that come from? Are those my thoughts or are those thoughts from like mm-hmm. when I was a five-year-old or 10-year-old that I'm bringing forward, but that's not who you are right now? Yeah, for sure. I think for me too, like I was always hesitant to sell, not because like somebody said their dad sold Kirby or, and then somebody was Amway. That was, is the reverse for me. I was always taught that you don't sell things. You're generous because you give it away for free. Mm -hmm. You're considered generous. And so I've always felt like, Oh, I want to be a generous person. And in it, and I associated the two of value and generosity with charging people. And so that is kind of like we all have our own mindset issues around all these different things, right? But then I realized is that you people do have to pay you in order to, how do I want to say this? Money gives you options, okay? Money gives you options. So I, for example, have more options because I charge people to pay me and I can help more with more options. And so I really needed to make that flip in my mind that I was worth this certain amount of money. And with money, I've seen it. 
even the riches of the rich people, they have the wealthiest people, they have the most options in the world. And then I was coming from a world where I only had limited options because I was very poor and my parents were refugee immigrants, you know, coming from nothing. So I had to like flip that in my own mind that, you know, generosity still meant that I could live in this other world, charge people, but it would actually make me more generous because I could help more because mm -hmm. I give, I, I'm just have more options, you know? So I, I think that that's, I hope that I explain that correctly in the thinking, but I think that we all have those issues of selling. And the bottom line is that you have to be able to sell. It's a skill that you need to develop and it's a muscle that you have to keep working and working and working. And it's, and it's a good thing. You need to be able to sell so you can bring money into your household so you can contribute to the local economy. So you can put your kids through school so you can close the generational wealth gap of your own family. Whatever it is that you see it, it comes in that form, you know. And I think it's important to first think, you know, Mina and I have had this conversation. If you listen to our episode with Jamie Kern Lima of It Cosmetics, she was on the podcast and she had this huge why as to why she started It Cosmetics, like huge, deep. She wanted, you know, women to be represented, multiple skin colors, different faces and like normal women. And so she always hooked on to that when she, when things got tough, when the bank account was super low, like when she was, you know, working all the hours and she was, she had this deeper, like rooted reason why when Mina and I had our own personal discussion about it, and I don't have to share specifically what it is to be honest. And we were having this discussion back then, a lot of it was like, it was personal, right? Our why at first is personal. And for all of mm -hmm. you, your why can be personal until it's not. So if as you're building this, you know, you have a bath bomb business, you sell pottery, you make jewelry, and you're like, it's not like, so that I represent women all around the world with my, you know, with the way that they have to be that grand. Yeah. You know, if it's, I want to leave my full-time job or I want to put away a college savings because I worked my way through school and I never, my parents weren't able to provide that for me and I want to do it for my kids or I don't know, something frivolous. I want to buy myself, you know, I don't know. I want to go on a real fancy vacation. I think at first, maybe not everyone agrees with us, but at first it can feel, you might feel like it's selfish, but it's self-serving because this is your business and why are you doing it? You left a full-time job or you started this business for a reason, which might've been that you don't want to work for someone else. You want freedom in your schedule. You want the ability to make unlimited amounts of money because you truly can and allow that to be the thing that first sets you off. So with Don or whoever else feels like, I don't want to be salesy. You're spending all of this time making your beautiful products. And if it's not serving your customers and then in return serving you and your family, what's the point? So yeah. feel that selfishness and don't feel guilty about it. Feel like this is going to, because here's the thing. When me and I started the product boss, it was our one day a week side business, side hustle. Let's just try it out. <laughs> Let's so, start a podcast. We should do masterminds. You know, it literally was like some, a sequence of decisions that led to this, you know, <laughs> it's a hundred percent a sequence of decisions that led to this. <laughs> now it's like all the days of our week and we still have our other businesses. But when we started back then we worked what the first like 10 months, maybe like we didn't pay ourselves. Maybe we like mm -hmm. pulled like a thousand dollars and went and bought something with it. It was like, we enjoyed it more it was not a hobby, but we enjoyed it more than the the money because we weren't really making money yet. Like we didn't, yeah. we had a little bit, but our families weren't depend on it, dependent on it before either. Correct. We had our other mm -hmm. businesses that our family, you know, paid our bills and it was kind of our fun kind of like spending money. I forget what one of the first things is that we, we'd spend our money to go see each other really like that was yeah. and pay for like education. We bought courses and we went to live events, for example. Yeah. So some of you might be in that place right now where like the weight of your family and your home income isn't relying on your business, which is fine. Some of you might be feeling like this is the thing that does pay my bills. So me and I went from that position of like it not needing to pay the bills to, oh, we're making money and we're actually building a savings. Like her and I started building a savings to where we are now. Lauren, how many people are on our team? Like in this year, we have now employed at least 15 people. So over the year of 2020, and they're global, and over the year of 2020 and then 2021, 
when people were laid off of jobs, when other businesses were shutting down, we were actually able to hire people that also have their own teams sometimes because some of them are contractors, some of them are not, and then give them and then give them jobs. And so, and we've donated money. We've supported mm -hmm. um, product. We've supported some product bosses and some things that really needed to happen. We are actually investors in a business. All and of guess this. Guess how we've done it. We I sold our it. asses off. <laughs> like, you know, going but back trying to the not selling, to be salesy, but, but in yeah, like, how can this no, help in a you? genuine way? That's mm -hmm. the thing, right? We're we're selling, and it's not like I'm not making any excuses about the fact that we sold our butts off because we made people millions of dollars, if not hundreds, if not thousands. Yeah, we haven't tens. calculated, but millions of dollars have been yeah. made. We do other free businesses. challenges. We mm -hmm. do free workshops. We definitely help people make money and they have to sell. And then they get more options, just like we have more options now with how we spend our money, you know? And so I really think that it comes down to the fact that be around people that know how to sell, but also are okay with you selling because you need to sell. Like it's not a dirty word. Money is not a dirty word in our community. Looking at numbers is not anything bad. Selling is not anything bad, you know? So I want you to really think about that, that there's, you don't have to excuse yourself with, Oh my gosh, I, I need to, this is a woman thing for sure. I've never actually met a man that excused himself of making a certain amount of money where like a lot of the women that I meet are like, well, I donate a lot of it. You know, I've helped this you know, where a man's not like, oh, I, I'm VP. Like I, I worked with VPs in the banking industry. You know, I had to do presentations for corporate they didn't annual make reports. They did excuses for never, like, never. they decided to spend their money. Right. They, they took their bonuses. They took their money and they would never be like, well, I'm really, you know, I know I'm in this position, but I don't, I help in the community or I'm really philanthropic or whatever else, you know? And so I want you to remember that you get to spend your money however you want but you still have to make the money too. And selling something you worked on, connecting it with a customer, giving something that they want because people base their purchases off of desires. You know, like they're like, oh, it's an emotional decision a lot of times. And so you have to, I mean, you're selling them something they want. So when Jacqueline and I are saying that we've made, we built this business, we're able to pay employees, we've gotten more options because we built our business to this certain point. But it is because we've sold something that we're really proud of and we're proud to sell it. And we're going to sell it all day long, all night long, essentially. You know, we show mm -hmm. up for it, you know? And so... I think you have to just embrace the fact that it is selling, but in a different way than you've ever thought of. I want you good, all, you know, yeah, I want you all to think about something that you bought that was helpful to you mm -hmm. and how you felt like, even if it's a thing that you were like, this is going to cost a lot of money, like vacuums for me even was always an emotional purchase. You, you have know, a like Roomba, it, for example, that is yeah. an expensive. Oh my gosh. Pet. We love him. He is our son. You know, which is seriously our joke. His name is Cleany. We call it, we call him the girl's brother. You know, they have to pick up and then he cleans for them. And so, you what know, a helpful little brother. <laughs> but he really is. So all of you think about, I just want you to first in your brain as a consumer, think about something you've purchased that maybe was a push. Like maybe you're like, oh, this is expensive, but it was a tool that you bought yourself or something helpful at home that you spent money on. Okay. Now, are you like the person, the business that sold it to you? Are you thinking, well, how dare they try? How dare they sell me that Roomba? How mm -hmm. dare they tell me how effective this Roomba is going to be and how helpful it's going to be to clean up after me? Okay. So there's that one feeling. Okay. Nespresso machine for Erica, mm, right? I love that. So then let's switch to something that you've desired, something that you've really, really wanted that maybe you've saved up for and that you're like, this is, I really want to buy this. I've had, I have enough money for me. I bought myself a Gucci bag this summer. Mm -hmm. Actually, I bought myself two Gucci bags this summer, partially because they were discounted because <laughs> I mm -hmm. love a good sale, but nonetheless, right? So something that I, and I really wanted it because my theme, when I ran my business for the first 10 years on the wall in my office was Chanel is not going to buy itself. This is pre-kids. A Chanel bag for me was like the thing. That I like, I was but like, I also because you're a fashion designer by trade, yeah. you know, you it's just something I wanted. Yeah, you've always wanted that. For yeah. me, it was um, an infrared sauna. 
I bought an infrared sauna. It's still not put together yet to be put together, <laughs> but I bought it. <laughs> it's downstairs in our basement and it's, you know, amazing. So when I'm talking about this purchase, even to my sisters, my family, everything, they're like, oh my gosh, you bought a sauna, an infrared yeah, sauna. And I'm like, yeah, you know, like I'm going to put on deep conditioning in my hair. I'm going like, I have all these plans for this sauna that I'm, my skin is going to be amazing. My hair is going to be amazing. And they at first were like taken aback a little bit because they were like, oh, oh my gosh, you bought a sauna. Like it's coming on a freight truck. Like, you know, because they, it's definitely a desire more than a need, 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 you know? So think and, about desires. Some of you might be like, Ugg boots, right? Because those are expensive mm -hmm. and you want them for the fall season. Like it might be, it could be something cheap. But if you think about something that's a desire, you don't absolutely need it, but it's something that you want. Then are you mad at the businesses for selling you that? Like, are you mad at Yearly Co for selling us solid gold bangles? I'm not. Mm -hmm. Like, I want you. more. Yeah. Like, <laughs> thank you for having those. <laughs> Am I mad at like the company with this water bottle? No. So think about desire because what you're doing is by presenting your products to them, right? And they have desire to purchase what you sell. Mm -hmm. And you do in the marketing and the playing of the round, all that, like you do have to create desire. You do have to show up. You do have to show it in use, which is why I know the team posted the 101 holiday content ideas, which is why we come up with content ideas for all of you, because it's the way of connecting. It's not being salesy. It's the way to talk yeah. about your products. That's like, Hey, look at all the features of this mug. Look how amazing the handle is. It's yellow. It's got this narrower brim, a wider bottom, you know, like it's weighted and I love a good weighted mug. It carry a lot of coffee in here. If I'm telling you about all these beautiful features of this mug, you may then say to yourself, I kind of want that mug too, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I desire that mug. Well, friends, I hope you had as much fun as we did. If you want to hang out with us live, join us every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern over at our Facebook page or Instagram. And if you want to hear the whole show, click on the link in our show notes and we'll see you over there. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through the Product Boss Podcast. If you love our show and it has helped you in any way in your business, would you mind doing two things for us? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Reviews help other product entrepreneurs know that this is the place to be to grow their businesses and realize that they're not alone. And we know that you all know that a five-star and honest review helps you sell more products to more people. So you know that your reviews help us reach more listeners around the world. Remember, what we give is what we receive, and we are all about helping each other in the Product Boss community. We are all in this together. We would be so appreciative of you if you could take the time right now to subscribe, leave a review, and even share this episode on social or someone you know so we can impact more lives. And remember, subscribing means that you will get notified each time we release a new episode so you never miss a thing. You have helped us grow and climb into the top 10 of all marketing podcasts and together we can keep climbing. Thank you, friends. And remember, there is room at the top for all of us. This episode is brought to you by the Shop 1 in 5 Pledge and Small Business Shopping Directory. It's a commitment to make one in five of your purchases from a small business online or offline. So head to shop1in5.com to take the pledge. And friend, while you are there, check out and shop from hundreds of small businesses in the Small Business Shopping Directory. It's the go-to directory to discover, support, and shop small businesses all in one place. Head to shop1in5.com.